I hope everybody has a balanced diet because you are in for a treat. This is unbelievable. Watch, Deegan. There's that saying that preparation creates confidence. And regardless about his wrist or whatnot, we're going to zoom in on some of his techniques here. Watch him off this triple coming into the right-hander before the whoops. Did you spot it? He's shifting up to, I believe, fourth gear. He's going to go through the rhythm in second. And right off this triple, he's going to go third, fourth. What is he going to do next? He's going to jump into the corner, and he's going to keep his feet on the pegs and let momentum keep him because these berms are essentially walls. They can keep their speed up and actually gain speed. They don't have to slow down that much. And so Deegan's going to stand up and sit down right at the end and get him square so that he'll hit the whoops in a straight line. So jumps in, stands up, and look at what he's doing. Is he's trying to weight that outside peg because he is essentially at 90 degrees leaned over. Pay attention to how he's got his ass off the side. It looks like he's scrubbing, but no, he's actually cornering. Once that rolls around, then he's finally going to sit down. Watch him go through the whoops. What happens there that creates the epic just wheelie till the end of the section? Well, he basically missed this fifth whoop. Yeah, it's sort of touched, but not enough to kick that front wheel back up so it drops down. And then from there, he's got two choices. He could let off and crash, or he could just hold on for dear life and maybe be able to ride out of it. He chooses the latter decides to lift up, wheelie, misses real wheel on another whoop, and then just go wheelie, wheelie. <laughs> After the start, you have the big G out section that leads up to another 180 degree corner. And what does Deegan do? He keeps his feet on the pegs the entire way through the inside. He cuts the corner and checks up where most guys follow up here. But as the night went on, the ruts got deeper and deeper. So you saw riders check down. You can see what McAdoo is doing is he's got his foot sticking out, not Deegan. Deegan checks up and doesn't even put his foot down for balance. And we'll watch Max come through the same section. And he ends up on the podium when this is all said and done with. He was one of the riders that just looked like he was hanging out, just going cruising. Because he didn't look incredibly fast, but he just kept a lot of momentum up. And how do he keep his momentum up here? Well, he's standing, and so all these choppy braking bumps, the bike is going to be able to flow underneath him, and it's not going to kick his ass in up. And if he's more comfortable and the bike is moving underneath him, he's not going to get as stiff. But he stands up all the way, just coasting, and decides to sit down almost, you would argue that this is probably further back than middle. That's semantics. Once he's ready to accelerate to step on, he was the only rider I saw do that in this corner. At the end of the whoops, he was also standing up. And it looked slow, but smooth. And sometimes when things look slow, they are not slow. They are actually pretty darn fast. And then he sits down once he's ready to accelerate. So he's just bropping around, uh, not braking, and then sits down and really accelerate. Fan favorite, Eli Tomac. There's lots of speculation going around there, and I'm a little bit of the root cause of some of it, saying that I think it's a nagging injury that's holding him back. Yes, he did win one of the races at the Triple Crown, but it is a much shorter race, where I think... As the race gets longer, it starts affecting him more. Here, he started off in third place. He is not in any way, shape, or form lacking confidence because you don't get good starts if you're not confident. He's putting himself in a good position, but I'm digressing a little bit. Racer X said that they spoke with the team, and the team said that he just had an off day. I say that that is just PR. That is what they're going to say. That's what they're going to tell you. Same thing with Deegan having his wrist issues. They're going to say it's a spray and it's, it, they're going to downplay it 100% because look what Tomac does early on. He was keeping up with these guys and he wheel taps the first three whoops 
in the whoop section, and he starts then to go backwards midway into the race. One thing I want to point out, you guys, is a little bit different technique here between teammates. This is after Cooper got around Tomac, but notice they are both trail braking. They are using the rear brake as a foot peg. But watch, Tomac actually comes off the lip using that rear brake as a foot peg, but we'll see Cooper get off of it. Cooper leans back, gets off of it so he can start accelerating so that he can jump on. Tomac is still sitting down. He's going to seat bounce this, but he does not get off that rear brake. Till now. Boom. Off. So we have two different techniques here. Trail braking till the exit of the corner for Cooper. And Tomac doesn't get off of it until he actually seat bounces and pops in the air. Here, real time. We're all looking to lower our lap times. You don't have to be pro. And sometimes we've got day jobs, so it's hard to do that. And you might have less than 30 minutes a day in order to get better. So Complete Racing Solutions has added an express training program to their platform. You still get all the nutrition, functional training, live webinars that all the other members get. It can just be a little bit more concise so that you can complete it during your day. Make sure you check out CompleteRacingSolutions.com. Moving on to the rider with the thickest skin, or at least it's hardening at the moment after what's been going on the last couple of weekends. The eventual winner went through the whoops the fastest of anybody. Watch what he does here. He is going to sit down, triple, then he's going to triple wheel tap, skim the rest of them here. We'll watch that again. I'll move it a little bit in slow motion. Watch him. He's going to use the starter bump as a little seat bounce, wheel tap, quad to then a triple wheel tap, front wheel hits down on the fourth one to then skim out. That was the fastest of anybody I saw go through the whoops. Who in their right mind seed bounces into a supercross set of whoops? You either have to be mental or incredibly talented or you just put in a whole lot of laps around the track and that bike is basically an extension of your body. I say it's just all the above. One thing I did notice is on the podium, most of these Alpine Star guys are just all the pros in general. They wear those Alpine Star just chest protectors with no shoulder pads. But without any shoulder pads, you're risking breaking collarbones and separating shoulders by just popping that collarbone out of the joint here. This is fairly obvious that Jet is wearing... Shoulder pads, which I like to see. I really wish more riders would see this. I know that everyone argues about you can't move around, but gosh, the gear these days is turning more into spandex underwear type stuff where, yeah, you might have some knee braces and some boots, but the helmet and the boots are pretty much the most protection that these guys have towards these foot pegs and all sorts of different sharp objects that could, no pun intended, rip your pants off. <laughs> So McAdoo's definitely the rider that's going to be known as the guy that rides balls out. <laughs> I digress. Shoulder pads is good to see. And if I move on a little bit onto his work spike, this, I want to know what you guys think. And, and also on that note, I am trying to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of February. So help me do that. Make sure you wheel tap that subscribe and you hit the notification icon if these videos help and you want to see more of them. This is on the right-hand side, which doesn't come standard. On the Works Edition, you have the traction control on the left-hand side, and then you just have the kill switch. On the standard version, you just have the, the kill switch and the same buttons here, but it is not on there. So for me, this is purely meant for those metal grates. We're going to go a little bit into physics on the next one. Talk about tapping the rear brake. I saw a lot of guys do it. Yes, you could argue that the track was a large arena cross track. 
in a football stadium where these riders had to be very precise. But I saw a lot of guys tapping the rear brake. It looks cool. AP was one of them. The two riders that I thought hindered them the most was AP and Jason Anderson. Looks cool. You pull in the clutch, you tap the rear brake, and then when you let go of the clutch and grab some gas, you get a cool little effect with the sticky dirt here. Here's a slow motion of it from his Instagram with KTM. Just looks super freaking cool. However, if you do that in multiple times in a lap, you're going to go slower. You're going to go milliseconds slower. And that's really the difference between a lot of qualifying times is it's milliseconds. We're not talking half a second. We're talking tenths. We're talking just minute small changes being made. And how is this slower? Well, anytime you stop that rear wheel, you're creating drag. And therefore, it's going to slow your forward momentum down. And yeah, it might not seem like a lot, but if you are a professional and you're racing against guys that are could split hairs between each other, it makes a difference. Especially if you do it two, three times a lap, you're going slower. Your lap times would have been faster from the get-go. So here, we'll watch AP come across the big G out section after the first turn. One thing he does is he lands real hard and you see these guys not even touch the landing because there's no lip here. There's no lip off this tabletop where the other couple tabletops had lifts. So they are having to accelerate, lean back and wheelie off. But more often than not, their front wheel doesn't actually hit the ground, which is super cool. But if we watch AP afterwards, tap the rear brake there, Rear wheel is not moving, and he does it in a few other sections. I will say that AP has one of the, if not the best, whoop techniques of all the riders. He's the only guy I really see pointing his toes inward to squeeze the motorcycle. It's going to put tension on his knees to hold himself so that bike's not going to kick around, and that is crucial when you have whoops that are becoming jagged where you'll see a lot of guys go side to side ap doesn't have the ass end swap as much as other riders because of the fact that he has his toes pointed inward usually you'll see most guys like cooper on their toes so that the seat doesn't hit their ass and get them to buck wild but they're not pointed inwards creating that pressure on the knee. On paper, you would say that Jason Anderson had a rough weekend, but watching him ride, I disagree. The guy searches for lines. He looks smooth. Yeah, there was guys that were going around him, but he jumps from inside to outside to back to outside to just get around all the rough stuff. He is out there searching, and usually that doesn't happen with riders that are stiff and they're going backwards. They hold their line, they get out of the way of other guys, they're not interested in blocking or racing. Jason raced everybody that was trying to get around him. I really have high hopes for this individual this year. He seems like he's came prepared, but a lot of the top 10 guys look that way. Even Dylan on his new team. I'm impressed with how he's how he's racing. <laughs>